Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to do something I haven't done before. We're going to test something out basically because I've been asked by some people, friends of mine, that I should do videos where I talk about basically how I wrote some of my songs, right? So of course, as you know, I'm a musician. I've put out songs over the years and uh, some people seem to be interested in, in knowing about, you know, knowing the story about the songs, knowing about how I composed them and how I produced them sometimes. So I thought I'd try that out. Um, maybe I can talk about some songs that I've done. Now, it should be said, of course, that um, while it's always interesting listening to people talk about their process, not all songs have a story behind them, right? Some song, you know, like the, the inception story of certain songs are really boring. Uh, at least I think so. You know, it wouldn't be interesting for you to listen to me sit here and say, you know, I was sitting around with a guitar uh, at my, on my couch and then I came up with this song. That's the end of the story. But some songs do have more of a kind of story behind them. Um, and so I guess those are the songs that would be most appropriate for this kind of video. And so today, uh, I, would, I thought I would talk about one, actually a pretty recent song that I put out late last year with a project called Ekar, which is a Swedish word which means oaks, basically, which is uh, the last name of my, 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 my father's family because it's a project that I do together with my father and my older brother. It's a kind of family project. And it's a song that I wrote for that project and it's called Blinded by the Lights. Um, I'm sure some of you have heard it. It's on this channel. Here's a little uh, snippet. A two pills and a glass of wine is foolproof for your peace of mind. I can't cut these carrots by yourself. They mess with you all the time. I can't tell where you draw the line. I guess you don't really need my head. Right, it's a pretty like folky, kind of upbeat, fun song. Uh, people really seem to like that song. I like that song. I'm very proud of that song. I think it's a, it's a very simple, but uh, I think very effective uh, song for what it is. Um, and that song actually does have somewhat of an interesting story. Now, my writing process can look very different. So there isn't just one way that I write songs. Uh, you know, I can come up with songs while I'm in the shower. I can come up with songs uh, while I'm on the, you know, subway, I can come up with songs when I'm sitting down with a guitar and trying to come up with a song. There are very many different ways that a song can can appear, that a song can manifest itself, so to say. But in general, I would say that most of my songs, at least the good ones, come from a specific, you know, it's based on a specific association, right? So a certain experience that I've had, and I wrote the song either during the experience or after the experience, looking back at that experience. Uh, it could be that I'm writing a song on a new instrument, for example, uh, which we'll get back to. You know, just finding new ways of, of inspiring yourself is often what helps. And having a strong association like, oh, that's the song I wrote when, I don't know, when my grandma died. Or, oh, that's the song I wrote when I played my old for the first time or that's the song i wrote when i was in the studio recording that other song or whatever like it, a song often needs to have a specific association and a story behind it or at least an idea behind it so maybe like i have an idea that i, oh, I want to try mixing jazz with uh, egyptian rap music i don't know like what's like an idea like that could also be very helpful in in inspiring a song to 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 come to be right and this song blinded by the lights came about because i got a new instrument and that's actually one of the most common ways for me to come up with new ideas is that you try new instruments and because that's a really interesting experience you're so used to your instruments you know the instruments that you usually play so for me guitar is probably my main instrument that's always been the instrument that i played for the longest time and the one that i uh, feel most comfortable with and I've written a lot of songs on the guitar and eventually you kind of get sick of your own playing so you're, you're sitting there you're playing you play the same stuff over and over again when you get into a rut like that and it's just really not inspiring and sometimes you can try playing a new instrument and that can totally change how you play it, it will change how you play so you play differently on different instruments I write completely different styles of music when I play the piano versus when I play the guitar or when I play the oud, for example. And so that's a really, you know, a tip for those of you out there, if, you, if you're struggling, just changing the instrument on which you write can 
can be a really helpful way of, of, of coming up with new ideas. And so that's what happened this time, because this song was written on the mandolin. And the mandolin is the main instrument uh, on, you know, on, this, on this track. It's, it's the sort of uh, the instrument that carries the whole thing. Um, and so the story behind it is that I got my first mandolin. I had sort of played mandolins before. Uh, I didn't know how to play the mandolin, but I'd, I'd held mandolins. But I, I, at some point, I wanted to own a mandolin of my own. So I ordered uh, this beautiful little thing from, uh, from Italy. This is a bowl back mandolin. I made a full video about, about mandolins and their history and, and what this mandolin in particular is and so on. I got this from a, a luthier in Naples, a famous company there that makes them. And I think I ordered this back in, it must have been 2016. So this is quite an old song, actually. I wrote this many years back and it didn't come out until last year. But so the story is that I got this mandolin, like late, I'm going to say late 2016. It might have been 2017, I don't know. Um, got it out of the box, uh, looked at it, very beautiful. I tuned the instrument and then the first thing I did was that I learned some basic chords. Uh, and the most, you know, the first chords you learn on the mandolin basically are uh, G and C and possibly D, right? So I learned those three chords. And then what happened was, and this is, you know, my brain usually works uh, in that way that when I have a new instrument in my hand and I, I'm trying out how it feels and so on, usually I'll come up with like a song or a song idea, and that's exactly what happened. So I started playing the basic, like the first thing I did when I held this mandolin for the first time, the first time I, kind of the first time I ever played a mandolin, definitely the first time I played this mandolin, was that I started playing that basic theme of the song, right? <laughs> I started singing the basic sort of melody of that. Uh, and then that was that was the basic that, that's the theme of the song that's what the song is built on and then you know the, the other chords like the C and the D are in there uh, I also added the F I found the F there and I just so the, the the verse of the song is basically And then F, C, and back, right? And that's that's the verse. And then for the chorus, I just did the C, the kind of staccato kind of thing. And then D. And then for the second part, the, the, the chorus, I kind of sp spiced it up a bit by First the same theme, so the C, and then I added a G minor, and I, uh, just to spice things up a bit, and that's essentially the whole song, <laughs> right? So uh, I wasn't trying to do something fancy, I was just toying around on this new instrument, I came up with that song. But I kind of like the vibe of that thing. Uh, I wrote some lyrics just sort of on the fly, I don't... We'll get back to the lyrics, but it was a very sort of spontaneous thing. Uh, and then I recorded a demo, I think, either the same day or the day after. And then I kind of, you know, left left it like that. I didn't consider it, I didn't consider it my best song necessarily. I thought it was a fun little tune. It has sort of a, a Beatles kind of vibe to it, especially a Paul McCartney-esque kind of sound, folky, uh, very upbeat, kind of, I wouldn't say happy, but kind of joyous. Uh, fun vibe um, and so that's the vibe that I also uh, wanted to to keep uh, for the finished product but so what's interesting is that I did that demo that same day that I wrote this song which was the same day that I got the instrument or, or possibly the day after in any case but on the finished recording which came out last year so the finished released song that demo recording of the original mandolin is actually what's used on that track. So I can play you 
here. I prepared some stuff here. I can play you the actual mandolin part from my demo, uh, which sounds like this. So interesting, you can even hear the actual metronome in the background because I wasn't recording with headphones, I was just recording with, with metronome on the speakers because I didn't think I would ever use that in a finished recording. Uh, I was wrong, but so in the intro, if you listen closely, you can hear the, the metronome in the background. So this is the, this is the demo from that same day, right? It isn't perfect, it doesn't sound perfect. It was recorded on this SM7 uh, microphone. Um, I, I'm not playing it perfectly, but I just really, when we were doing the finished, like the, the actual song, I really like the vibe of that original recording. And I like the idea of having the original recording because, you know, my philosophy is that music is very much um, something that happens in the moment right as you're inspired at a specific moment in your life to write something and the best time to record that sometimes not always is in that moment of inspiration when that song is is most sort of close to you as close to the moment where you come up with that song because that's the moment when that song becomes an extension of you that's that's that time when that song uh, becomes an expression of what you're feeling and thinking at that point in your life and so there's something special about having uh, recorded that song as close as possible to that point in time as well because I think you can hear maybe I'm just being uh, woo woo here but I think you can hear that in, in the performances a lot of the time as well um, and that worked really well for this specific project because we wanted to uh, we aimed for sort of a very laid back kind of jammy vibe for this album uh, because we didn't have a professional studio to record things in we recorded a lot of this at my home studio and to try to make it sound professional completely to sort of attempt to sound like a professional recording it just wouldn't we would never be able to convince people uh, <laughs> because that's just how it is and so instead we wanted to to sort of lean in the opposite direction and make it sound like it's recorded you know in a random place uh, you know you hear the mistakes and in the, the in the playing you can hear people breathing in the background sometimes you know you just have you know the, the chairs are sort of creaking um, we wanted that sound for the album and so having that original mandolin recording also uh, worked in favor of that kind of sound and so for the production of this song, again, I wanted to keep it really simple. Uh, I didn't want to overproduce it. I wanted to stay in that sort of very folky, uh, acoustic, kind of laid back, not laid back, but uh, raw kind of production. And so there isn't a lot going on in this song. There is the, the, the mandolin again. You have this going on. You can hear the little mistakes here and there. And then I just added sort of a guitar behind that to to um, to make it a bit more sort of full. Wider. It also provides a bit more sort of harmonic uh, depth to it in some way. But the chords become more pronounced behind the mandolin because the mandolin you know the chords on the mandolin especially the f right it doesn't have that punch with the guitar it really emphasizes that chord For the drums, so originally the drums was just this one thing throughout the whole um, song. I just wanted this classic sort of folky bass, bass drum pulse. So this thing. It 
it's just keeping the 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 rhythm basically and then of course on top of that you add you add a bass which follows that that bass drum just punching those those notes I think under that there is also a tambourine here. Yeah. So that's essentially the foundation of the song, right? There isn't a lot more going on there except for except for vocals, of course. And the one thing that did change from my original recording, so a lot of this is basically the same as what I recorded on that first day, but the drums are different. So the drums are played by my older brother, Yuan, who did an amazing job. He's like perfectly kind of Ringo-esque on this track. Uh, but what he added is that after the first chorus is that he suggested that we sort of open up the, the rhythm to make it swing a little more. And I was sort of uh, skeptical of that idea at first because I wanted to keep it in that very simple, that just that pulse throughout the whole thing. But, you know, as soon as he sent me that version, I mean, just listen to this. <laughs> gives the song the, the perfect sort of push after that second chorus to to make it interesting for the for the second half and you know it turns out he was completely right um so thank you Yuan, for that that really uh is becomes an essential <laughs> aspect of, of that song uh, and then of course um there is the vocals which is me i'm doing all the vocals on this one a two pills and a glass of wine is foolproof for your peace of mind I can't cut these carrots by yourself They mess with you all the time And so again, you can hear the, the, the mandolin in the background. I don't think this vocal was recorded. It's not the original vocals from the demo. So I'm not sure why you would hear the mandolin in the background. Perhaps that was, uh, that was me thinking I should... It doesn't really make sense. Anyway. That maybe just that's just a production mistake on my part, but you don't hear it on the final recording. And then, of course, you have the harmonies, so the vocal harmonies, which add, uh, make it a little more interesting in the verse, for example. It's foolproof for your peace of mind. I can't cut these carrots by yourself. Line. I guess you don't really need my help. And then the harmonies in the chorus also. Watching the skies, you see it all tonight Including you, blinded by the lights right, So it's not, it's very simple harmonies But I think it works really well for the song uh, it, it fits within that sort of genre that the song is in And, and it really uh, makes the sound a bit more full it makes it more interesting, uh, sort of, yeah, it just adds, I think, I'm, I'm a harmony guy, I just think it adds so much. Now, interestingly, another part of this song that I know is from that or original uh, demo recording that I did on that first day is actually just this little, this little thing towards the end. Uh -huh. <laughs> so... <laughs> which ended up on the final recording because that was just a stupid ad lib that I did on that demo. And, and it is totally stupid, but I just something about, again, just capturing that initial moment of inspiration that just perfectly encapsulated that to me. And so I ended up putting it in the song because that's the kind of thing you can't redo. I, I try to do when I did like the actual vocals, I try to redo that part and it just sounded totally cringy and stupid. I mean, it's stupid here too, but it was even more stupid because you could tell that I was trying to to do something. But here, you, it's just so spontaneous that, at least to me, I, I think it works really well. And so when you put it all together, it sounds something like this. Spotless shirt and a pair of shoes The kind that are overused I can't wait for the record to be set all the cars that you'll never drive and now 
And what I have here is not the completely finished mix because we did actually record some parts of this song in a professional studio. Uh, we added some uh, Mellotron sounds uh, in the second part of the song. Uh, we added some more uh, tambourine just to fill out the sound even more. And we did some clapping, me and uh, my friends David and Alex, who has a studio here in Stockholm. We work together a lot. So the finished song does sound significantly different from what I played you here. And I can play you a little snippet of time. I'm sure you've heard the finished song, but it sounds like this finished. sounds obviously completely different from this very simple uh, raw mix that I that I did here. Um, this is professionally mixed and we've added a bunch of stuff uh, but I think it retains that original uh, vision. It still sounds sort of Beatle-esque and Paul McCartney-esque. It sounds folky. It has that sort of raw sound but thanks to the mixing magic of, of uh, David and, and Alex uh, it also has a sort of a um, uh, some uh, sort of modern uh, fancy uh, glitter on top as well. Uh, so I'm really happy with with how this song turns turned out. There is also a music video to to this song, um, which is also quite uh, interesting. It has a story behind it, so I might as well tell that story as well. So the video, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's on my channel. Um, it's just me. It's just a slow zoom into my face as I'm being decorated with flowers and, and grass and stuff like that. Um, and so that was based, aside from just being a really uh, fun idea, it was based on a, an experience that I had about a year ago. Uh, I work at a school, uh, as of this recording, at least still I'm working at a school. Uh, I've been a sort of English teacher and... and um, assistant for for students uh, grade five which has been just uh, the most wonderful wonderful thing and last year we were out sort of a field trip uh, in a field just a lovely sort of early summer day and my students who i love and adore so much they wanted to basically be annoying and so they started to as i was lying down on the grass just sort of relaxing and, and trying to enjoy the the sun and, and the weather they started just putting stuff on my face so they would put <laughs> flowers on my eyes they put grass it, it all over my face um and you know i would jokingly be like oh you know you're so annoying but really i thought it was a it was a lovely lovely moment and one of them also took a picture of me with all that stuff on my face. Uh, and that picture became the basis for that video. Because later when I was looking at that picture and thinking of that experience, I was like, that's a lovely thing, just in general. And it's a lovely picture. And there's something about that visual of me just with flowers as eyes and just with grass all over me that just feels really summery and, and wonderful. And then I connected that to the song and thought that would be a pretty cool visual for the song. And so that's the story behind that video. I basically was trying to recreate that experience that I had with, with my students uh, in that field. Uh, some of my students know this and I show them the video a few months later and, and, and they told me they liked it at least. So, uh, and so shout out to my wonderful students if, if any of you are watching. And that's the story behind that video and the story behind that song. So it, it went from this really stupid little simple mandolin thing with three chords, well, technically, technically four chords, but based on, on the three most basic chords that you learn, the first chords you learn on the mandolin, just a silly little song that a few years later turned out to be 
a really really cool i think and probably one of my most successful songs i mean that's, you know i have to consider that in, in perspective that i'm not some you know successful artist uh, or something but you know within the 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 bounds of of my uh career so to say uh my limited uh, career it's one of my most successful and popular songs uh, and i think it has partly something to do with that simplicity and that's an interesting thing because at least to my experience sometimes you try to create these you know masterpieces you try to write these very complex songs and sometimes those turn out really well but you know it's a classic thing that it's often the most the simplest and the the songs that you write the fastest so this one's written in like 15 minutes um and then you, those are the songs that you kind of discard originally. You're like, that's the stupid thing that I just came up with in, in the heat of the moment and then forget about. But sometimes those are the songs that are in the end kind of your best work, probably because they are so spontaneous and in the moment and they are sort of a direct expression of something you're feeling or, or you know, an expression of an inspiration that you're having. Um, Whereas, you know, you sit down, you try to write something that can all, often feel forced. And I think this one is a perfect example, for me at least, to sometimes not try too much, but just let the music happen and not discard those little silly ideas that you have, because those little silly ideas can turn out to be uh, something really great. I mean, not saying that this song is anything special, but I, I'm, it's a song that I'm proud of. I think it's a cool song. It's a fun little pop tune. Um, and people really seem to enjoy it. So um, if you haven't listened to the song, it's on Spotify, it's on all of those platforms. Uh, the video to the song, which you now know the story behind, is also on this channel. And that's essentially the, the story behind Blinded by the Lights. It's not the song by The Weeknd. I'm sorry if any of you who clicked on this video thought that I was going to reveal that I'm the actual composer behind that song. It's not. Um, he stole the, the title from me. No, he didn't, but obviously I wrote this song back in 2016 or 17 and named it back then. And so I had no idea that uh, the title would be identical to the biggest hit of 20, was it 2020? Uh, and in any case, I'm not sure any of you are still here and found this to be interesting at all. I thought it was pretty fun actually to talk about this song. You know, you rarely get the opportunity to talk about the process of you know, your creative process, whether it be music or whatever. And so I enjoy this. Um, if you enjoyed it and you would like to see more videos like this where I talk about the creative process and different songs and stuff that I've done, then let me know in the comments. Um, but you can also look forward to more of my usual content. I'll be making more introductory videos to different instruments. I'll be talking more about some uh, musicians from history and I'll be posting, of course, music. There is some, I have some really uh, great uh, exciting music coming out soon, both uh, as a sort of solo artist or under my own name, but also under my other project called Zini, uh, which should be coming out later this year. Some of it probably already this summer. So look forward to that. I sure am excited for that stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my other channel, Let's Talk Religion, if you haven't already. And I will see you in a future video.